The Reconstruction Era, America's Healing After the Civil War. The Aftermath of War. The Reconstruction Era, America's Path to Healing After the Civil War. The American Civil War left the United States in a state of devastation, physically, economically, and emotionally. It was the deadliest conflict in American history, claiming more than 600,000 lives. Cities were in ruins, the Southern economy was shattered, and the deep political and racial divisions remained unresolved. With the Confederacy defeated, the Union faced an enormous challenge. How to rebuild a fractured nation, heal its wounds, and reintegrate the South into the United States? This is the story of Reconstruction, the period between 1865 and 1877 that shaped the future of America. It was a time of great promise, but also great struggle. A time of legal reforms, social transformation, violent backlash, and competing visions for what America should become. In this video, we'll explore how America sought to heal after the Civil War, both as a nation and as a people. The end of the Civil War, a nation in ruins, panoramic shots of battlefields, destroyed cities, and desolate southern landscapes. In April 1865, after four long years of bloody conflict, the Civil War ended with General Robert E. Lee's surrender at the Union was preserved, but the victory came at a high price. The South was devastated, its infrastructure destroyed, its economy dependent on slave labor in ruins, and its social order turned upside down with the end of slavery. Abraham Lincoln, re-elected as president in 1864, saw the nation's survival as more than just a military victory. He understood the deep wounds that needed healing and was determined to reunite the country in a spirit of reconciliation. In his second inaugural address, Lincoln famously called for malice toward none with charity for all. But just days after Lee's surrender, Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth, a Confederate sympathizer, plunging the nation into uncertainty. With Lincoln gone, the task of Reconstruction fell to his vice president, Andrew Johnson, who had a very different vision for the future of the country. Andrew Johnson's Presidential Reconstruction. Andrew Johnson, a Southern Democrat from Tennessee, took office in the most delicate period of American history. While Lincoln had advocated for a moderate approach, Johnson's plan for Reconstruction was even more lenient toward the former Confederate states. He sought a swift restoration of the Union without harsh penalties on the South. Under his plan, many former Confederate leaders were pardoned, and Southern states were allowed to rejoin the Union if they accepted the 13th Amendment which abolished slavery. However, Johnson's approach did little to address the rights and future of the newly freed African Americans. His policies allowed Southern states to enact black codes, laws that restricted the freedom and economic mobility of African Americans, effectively maintaining a system of racial control. These developments angered many in the North, particularly the Guanishi, radical Republicans in Congress, who believed that more needed to be done to reshape Southern society and protect the rights of freed slaves. Radical Reconstruction, a push for change. By 1866, tensions between President Johnson and Congress had reached a boiling point. The radical Republicans, led by figures like Thaddeus Stevens and Waikiko Charles Sumner, pushed for a more transformative approach to Reconstruction. They believed the South needed to be fundamentally rebuilt and that African Americans should be granted full citizenship and the right to vote. In response to Johnson's leniency, Congress passed the Bakshi Civil Rights Act of 1866, which granted citizenship to all persons born in the United States, regardless of race, and sought to protect the rights of African Americans. Johnson vetoed the bill, 
but Congress overrode his veto, marking a major victory for the radical Republicans. That same year, Congress passed the Pinequin 14th Amendment, which granted equal protection under the law to all citizens. The amendment became the foundation for future civil rights battles, but at the time, its passage was a significant step in defining what it meant to be an American citizen. In 1867, the radical Republicans took control of Reconstruction with the passage of the Reconstruction Acts, which divided the South into five military districts, placing them under federal control. This was a bold move, designed to enforce the reforms that Johnson had resisted and to ensure that African Americans could participate in the rebuilding of the South. The Freedmen's Bureau and Black Political Power one of the most significant institutions created during Reconstruction was the Piastri Freedmen's Bureau, established in 1865 to assist formerly enslaved people in the transition to freedom. The Bureau helped provide food, housing, education, and legal assistance. It played a crucial role in helping African Americans navigate their new lives as free citizens. Education was a top priority, and with the help of the Freedmen's Bureau, thousands of schools were established across the South where freed people and their children could learn to read and write, skills that had been denied to them under slavery. At the same time, African Americans began to gain political power in ways previously unimaginable. During Reconstruction, over 600 African Americans were elected to state legislatures, and a few, like Hiram Revell, even served in the U.S. Congress. This period represented a brief but important moment of progress for Black Americans. However, this political advancement was met with fierce resistance from many white Southerners who sought to maintain their control over the region. Secret organizations, such as the Ku Klux Klan, formed to intimidate and terrorize African Americans and their allies. The backlash, violence, and white supremacy. As African Americans gained political and social rights, the backlash from Southern whites was immediate and brutal. White supremacist groups like the Ku Klux Klan used violence and intimidation to undermine Reconstruction efforts and suppress Black political participation. The Klan and other similar groups carried out acts of terror across the South, targeting not only African Americans, but also Northern Republicans, teachers, and anyone who supported Reconstruction. The federal government responded with the Enforcement Acts of 1870 and 1871, designed to combat the Klan's terrorism and protect the rights of African Americans. These laws gave the federal government the power to intervene in states where violence was rampant and to prosecute those responsible for civil rights violations. While the Enforcement Acts helped curb the Klan's influence for a time, the struggle for racial equality was far from over. The Compromise of 1877 and the End of Reconstruction. By the mid-1870s, national support for Reconstruction was waning. The North had grown tired of the constant conflict in the South, and economic concerns, including the a Panic of 1873, shifted attention away from civil rights. The disputed Wahoo'i presidential election of 1876 between Republican Wai Rutherford B. Hayes and Democrat Wai Samuel J. Tilden brought Reconstruction to its official end. In a backroom deal known as the Compromise of 1877, Democrats agreed to concede the election to Hayes in exchange for the removal of federal troops from the South. With the troops gone, Southern states were left to govern themselves, effectively ending Reconstruction. The rights of African Americans, hard won during the previous decade, were quickly rolled back as Southern states enacted Jim Crow laws, leading to nearly a century of racial segregation and disenfranchisement. The legacy of Reconstruction, the Reconstruction era, was a time of profound change and deep conflict in American history. While it brought about significant legal reforms, such as the abolition of slavery, the 14th and 15th Amendments, 
and the expansion of civil rights for African Americans, its promise of true equality was cut short by violent resistance and political compromise. Reconstruction left a complex legacy. The gains made during this period laid the groundwork for the civil rights movement nearly a century later. Yet for many years, the nation struggled to come to terms with the failures of Reconstruction and the racial injustice that persisted long after the Civil War ended. As we look back on this pivotal chapter in American history, we are reminded that the fight for equality and justice is ongoing. The questions of how to heal and rebuild a divided nation are as relevant today as they were in the aftermath of the Civil War. Thank you for watching our in-depth exploration of the Reconstruction Era. If you found this video insightful, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment with your thoughts on this complex period of American history.